Hey guys, it's Sudi Kumatua, and today I'm going to talk about some animation software that's used in the animation industry, especially for 2D animation. Whether you're looking for 2D animation software for work or for personal use, the ones I'm going to talk about are considered industry standard, meaning that they're commonly used within studios. And maybe give my perspective if you're having difficulty on which one to move forward with. So I'm going to be talking about Adobe Animate, Clip Studio, TV Paint Pro, and Toon Boom Harmony. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to do a follow-up video talking about other ones that I missed out or other ones that I'll learn in the future. I'm actually going to exclude Blender in this list because Blender, while I do think there's a lot of promise with the Grease Pencil tools and that it's free and there's a lot of amazing things you can do with Blender, I don't think it's commonly used within 2D animated productions. And not a lot of animators who primarily work in 2D animation utilize Blender fully. Maybe more in the indie side, but it's not yet at a place where I see many studios utilize it. So in this video, I do want to talk about the general summary of the software, works I've personally done with them, what I like about the software, and things where I felt like there's room for improvement. And towards the end of the video, maybe give my own advice and opinions about which ones to move forward with depending on your goal. So first of all, let's talk about Adobe Animate. Formerly known as Flash, this was the go-to digital animation software for many users. A lot of animators that I personally know started with Adobe Animate or Flash. Studios like Bobby Pills and Titmouse are companies that heavily utilize Adobe Animate or a version of Flash. Sadly and understandably, it's been having a decline due to Adobe's lack of support for Adobe Animate and support for the Flash and Shockwave format. Since then, other 2D animation softwares have caught up, doing a much better job and being a better preference for animators. So I do have a sentimental value for Adobe Animate because it's what I made my very early animated work on. I animated my second year student film Crayon Dragon in Adobe Animate, an older version of it. Some of my early shots for my Dusk Flight short were animated in Adobe Animate. What I really loved about Adobe Animate, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people who started with Flash and Adobe Animate, is its library system, which is a way to store and reuse assets like loops, pre-made animation that you can just reuse over and over again, poses for different mouth shapes, or reusing a drawing instead of having to redraw it and recolor it over and over again. It is part of the Adobe ecosystem, so if you have a compositing software like After Effects where you can put in your effects or combine the animation with the backgrounds, things like that, having a finished shot, you can actually just import the project files of your Adobe Animate files instead of having to export it into a video or image sequence for it to load in After Effects. Some studios actually still utilize older versions of Adobe Animate or Flash because that's when it was the most ideal. And that's something that I do want to talk about because over the years, it has been pretty clunky as of late. It doesn't optimize its playback, so when you play and preview your animation, it's actually playing much slower than it should be. The drawing tools aren't the best, and only a small quality of life elements were improved over time, like the ability to flip between drawings instead of single frames, something that other animation programs have done years before. It's weird because there are things where they took a step forward, but several things that took a step back. To use, you need access to the Creative Cloud membership from Adobe. That's about 60 US dollars a month. Now, that might seem pricey, but if you see yourself using the Adobe Creative Cloud stuff, like Adobe Animate, Adobe Audition, Adobe After Effects, Photoshop, amongst other Adobe programs, it's actually not a bad deal. And that comes with updates and different versions that you can install. 60 US dollars is not chump change, but you get way more than a single program. And I guess a Creative Cloud drive, which I barely use. And as someone who uses Adobe programs for my line of work, both professionally and personal, it makes it worth it to me. Clip Studio X. Did you know that Clip Studio used to be called Manga Studio back in the day? Or that's how it was marketed for North American releases. Clip Studio is a digital illustration software for comics, painting, and of course, 2D animation. If you're more interested in the 2D animation functionality, just focus on Clip Studio X because that has the full animation functionality. I will say right now, Clip Studio is basically the standard for anime work, and it's something that you might want to consider if you want to do anime work and work within that field. Now, with that being said, I've only used Clip Studio's animation functionality for anime freelance when I accept the work. They give me files in Clip's project files. The way Clip works is ideal for anime work because you can easily export your cells 
as image files instead of rendering every single frame. And that's kind of the submission that they ask for when you're submitting them. There's many ways you can export them. You can even export them into every single frame if you wanted to. But what I really like about Clip Studio is that you can export each layer into its own movie file or its own image sequence and it'll have its own folder when you export them. Not only that, a single drawing within the timeline or a single cell within the timeline can have multiple layers. So if you're submitting like Genga with your shadow shapes and lighting shapes, and each of those things are in separate layers, you can put it in the same cell. Whereas in other programs, it's all just layer based. I have to make a layer for the line art, a layer for the rough drawings, a layer for the shadow shapes, a layer for like the highlights and the lighting shapes. But no, there's a lot of things that are pretty straightforward and simple, like making the camera move. Another thing that I'd like to add is that drawing in Clip Studio is such a blessing. The brushes are great, the pencil tools are great, so much better than drawing in Photoshop. The only real thing that I don't like about Clip is that its playback can be laggy and it can skip frames at times. It's not really properly optimized for playback. So when I talk about playback, what I mean is just hitting play and watching your animation just play. And I have to do workarounds like change the resolution or zoom out just for it to play smoothly. The pricing for Clip Studio X is about $258 US dollars for a one-time payment. And for monthly payments, I believe it's about $9 USD per month. It's not a bad deal if you ask me and many users seem to agree as more of them are migrating from expensive programs to a program like Clip. TV Paint Pro. Did you know at one point TV Paint used to be called Mirage. So TV Paint is my go-to software as I've used it for over 10 years now. It's fast, it has a lot of friendly features for traditional style animation or for people who prefer animating in that classical style. TV Paint is raster based, meaning it's bitmap based. So think of it like Photoshop. You can paint on it, you can smudge on it. So it allows for a lot of animators and artists to experiment with it. Flipping between different drawings and key poses is a dream because you can customize based on if you want to flip between bookmark drawings, if you want to flip between different drawings or different in-betweens, there's a lot of customization for that. The timeline is excellent. When I see my timeline, I can see how long each or pose lasts for. It just indicates it instantly in the timeline. There's a lot of functionality that allows you to track and control the timing of your drawings and animation. TV Paint is fast and optimized really well, allowing me to animate as much as I can, as detailed as I can, while having it play smoothly in most cases. Since it was made in France, there's a lot of French studios that use it. But there's a lot of 2D animation productions outside of France and Europe that uses it. I'm also including Japan and other Asian territories as well. Because it's currently my go-to hand-drawn animation, a lot of my work has been done in TV Paint, especially my recent modern ones. I've even done some anime freelance with TV Paint because it felt faster than doing it in Clip Studio for me. Now, when I started using TV Paint, I will say that the learning curve compared to other programs was pretty steep because they do things a little differently. I'll give you an example. Copying and pasting an image from an outside source, for example, isn't simple. You have to be aware of the few steps for it to work because sometimes if you paste it the wrong way, it'll resize it or you have to paste it as an image instead of like a frame, just some weird stuff like that. Also things like camera moves and compositing the characters with the backgrounds, I prefer doing it on other programs just because TV Paint does things pretty weird when it comes to that. I will also say that it took about 10 fucking years to update from TV Paint 11 to 12. 12 has some amazing features in it, but goddamn. TV Paint Pro is a version that I use and the current versions for TV Paint Pro is going for the price of about 1850 USD for a one-time payment and 751 USD for the standard. It's not cheap, but it sounds about right for professional animation software. However, I will say they have been pretty good with their discount offers, so if you want to simply upgrade from, let's say, a previous version to the next, some of those discounts can be about 50% off or more for what you would normally pay for a brand new perpetual license. Toon Boom Harmony is pretty much the industry standard for a lot of shows and productions. Most animated TV shows are usually done with Harmony. Harmony is very robust. You can do both traditional style animation to advanced rigging with really complex puppets. Toon Boom was an option I was exploring when I wanted to migrate from Adobe Animate. I was looking for a better version of Adobe Animate. Toon Boom Harmony was that for me. While you can work in pixels and raster, its vector functionality is where it shines. 
Things like this allows you to change the line width or the line texture in a few clicks. It allows for complex rigging if you wanted to do that. It has an advanced library system, so like I said in Adobe Animate, you can make a preset and reuse it later in a different project or a different shot. Their shift and trace functionality is by far my favorite when it comes to an animation program. Another great thing about Harmony, and the biggest great thing about it, is its node system. And you can do things like compositing from there, adding effects to your animation, or you can configure the way you export your files. Like, you can make the node system basically export each layer as its own image sequence or movie file. If you wanted to, you can fully composite your animation work with backgrounds, effects, the final image, in Harmony. I personally felt like Harmony was a bit too complex for my use case because I feel like I'm not taking advantage of its capabilities. There's a lot of great features that I don't use or I'm not even aware of. Sometimes just to work on a single shot, you probably need a whole folder dedicated to that one shot. That stores drawings, frames, assets, palettes, other data. Whereas other programs by default would save everything into a single project file. I do understand there's great advantages to this, especially when it comes to backups and recovering corrupted files, but it always drove me away from doing really simple shit. Harmony is the most expensive on this list. Depending on what version you get, it can range from 29 USD per month to a whopping 133 USD fuck you money per month. 133 US dollars for one program. I think Autodesk Maya alone costs about 150 USD per month, but still. I do remember that they do offer perpetual licenses, meaning one-time payment. I don't know if they still do that, but I remember when I first saw them, they were like about 2,000 USD going over 2,500 USD. All I remember is they were super expensive. Toon Boom also has like gold and silver support systems that you may have to pay extra for. Some will support you on some things and some won't support you on other things. So now it comes down to which one should you get? I guess it all comes down to a few questions. What is your budget? What kind of work do you wanna do with it? Are you using other programs with the animation software for things like backgrounds and compositing and video editing? And by the end of it, I'll probably give you guys my most logical choice. So if you're looking for value pricing and you just wanna animate in 2D, Clip Studio is probably the best option. You might also want to consider getting into Clip Studio if you want to work in the anime industry because they exchange files with Clip, from my experience that is. TV Paint to me feels the most natural to me when it comes to animating, especially if you love animating in that traditional style of animation. With TV Paint, there's a lot of convenient tools for hand-drawn animation, especially in that classical hand-drawn style. You just have a lot of control over the animation stuff, like controlling the timing, controlling what drawings to flip between. That is so convenient and is still unrivaled. That's why it's still such a strong go-to for a lot of professional 2D animators. Harmony is tricky. Harmony is a really, really good program, but at the same time, it's super expensive. But there's also a lot of gray zones because there's so many different versions, different payment plans. While it is being used within major studios, there are plenty of pricing options for different versions. The cheapest options, even though I personally think it's still up there, 29 USD a month, won't have options that you might want to have like shift and trace options, whereas the next version will have those options, but it will also have a lot of options that you don't really need for a steep price jump. If you see yourself using it for professional work or you want to deal with working with rigs, it's worth looking into. When a good deal happens to come your way, go for it. I do personally think it's a great software no matter which option you get, but I'd feel more comfortable using it if it was for work, it was supplied by work, or I get a really good discount. Adobe Animate, I just don't even bother with it because it's a program that's lacked support over the years and a lot of other programs have outshined it. Could you still animate decently with Adobe Animate? Yeah, but I gotta be honest with you, it runs like ass nowadays. So if you're looking for the safest and smartest choice, I would probably say Clip Studio Pro because not only is it the cheapest option here, but there's a growing community in it, it's getting popular, and a lot of anime studios use it. And that's something you might want to know if you're trying to get into anime work. You can use Clip Studio for simply just drawing, for illustration, for painting, for drawing. There's a lot of things that you can do with Clip Studio. Now, if you're an animator that's looking for something that's a lot more robust when it comes to the animation tools, then I would look into TV Paint and Toon Boom Harmony. I will say that between TV Paint and Toon Boom Harmony, it's kind of like a tie, but I think for very different reasons. TV Paint to me feels the most natural to animate with. It's fast, it feels good to draw in, a lot of convenience when it comes to the animation tools. 
I will say that it is the most artist friendly program that I've used because it allows for experimentation. Like if you've wanted to experiment with a painterly style for hand drawn animation, you can easily do that. And there's so many ways you can do that. It's very forgiving in that. And maybe it's because it's mostly a raster based program. Tube Move Harmony is great production wise because it's vector based. You can save assets, you can reuse them. It's great for a pipeline. You can adjust the node system to make your workflow or pipeline really convenient. And you can basically just easily composite a whole film in it if you wanted to. It is vector based so depending on what kind of style that you're going for or what kind of workflow that you're going for you kind of have to work in a specific way especially when you're introducing vector things and basically rigs. Adobe Animate or Flash used to be one of the main programs that was used in the animation industry and there are professionals that still use it. It is decreasing in popularity due to lack of support and if you just wanted to stay in the Adobe ecosystem, like let's say all you're using are Adobe apps and Adobe Creative Cloud has access to After Effects, a compositing program, Adobe Photoshop, you can use that to do illustrations and backgrounds, Premiere for video editing. Like if you just wanted to stay in that cloud or that ecosystem of Adobe, then Animate is there for you. But I will also say that there's free animation programs out there that's doing a better job than Adobe Animate. And I would prefer using the other three that I mentioned. Anyways, those are the industry standard programs that I wanted to talk about. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.